Good morning, Stitchy people. I hope you are all doing well. This is Jesse with Miss Late Pages. It is Sunday, March 28th. Um, I believe when I'm filming this, I'm having trouble keeping track of the days of the week and where we are and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, uh, for those of you who are returning, welcome back. I'm so happy to see you. For those of you who are new and here for the first time, thank you so much for checking me out. Um, I am so happy to be here with you today. I know it's been a little bit longer than usual um, since I got my last video up. As you're all probably aware, there's a few things going on in the world. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I do want Want to say a couple of things and what I'm going to do because um, I know some folks get stressed out uh, by hearing current events kind of stuff and you know sometimes that's why you come to floss tube and uh, other YouTube channels is so you can avoid all of that completely so I'm gonna put some timestamps here if you want to skip ahead to this part in case it might cause you any kind of grief at all um, I don't want to cause anybody any issues but I do just want to address the um, the massive elephant on the planet um, you know, we are all struggling right now, I think, um, with the stuff that's going on, um, and we're all dealing with it in different ways. Uh, I hope that you're finding creative outlets for, um, for yourself so that you can keep yourself sane in these times. Um, a lot of us are working from home. I'm very fortunate that I can do that. I know a lot of folks aren't able to, um, and I just kind of want to say that, um, you know, if you're struggling, I understand, um, I've been struggling. It's one of the reasons that this video is late getting out is because it's been hard to really keep on track with my creative stuff. Um, dealing with the new work from home situation, everything going on in the world, um, some other stress stuff in my life that's actually completely unrelated to <laughs> Um, to the global stuff too. So um, it's it's been a rough couple of weeks um, and I know you all are having a rough few weeks or months depending on where you are in the world and um, you know I just want you to know that I'm here. Um, I hear you. I see you. Um, I feel you. I, I know what you're I know at least some of what you're going through and I hope that you're all doing okay. I hope that you're keeping yourself um, safe. I hope that you're keeping your family safe and uh, that you're all doing well, that you're feeling well. Um, certainly if you're one of those folks that's been deemed essential and you're still having to go into work, um, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Please stay safe. Uh, for the rest of us, whatever you're doing, whether you're working from home, whether you're unfortunately out of work right now, um, you know, I hope that you're doing your best to keep your sanity, um, stay stitchy, because I know that's one of the things that helps me a lot, so. Anyway, just wanted to just wanted to address that. Um, I feel like I like I prefer to keep this, you know, kind of upbeat and happy, and you know, because we come here to kind of get away from the world. Um, you know, I, I do my stitching so that I can calm down, so that I can de-stress, and all that sort of stuff. And I don't want to bring a lot of that stuff into floss tube. But what's going on right now is on such a massive scale. I think it's important to at least address it a little bit, understand that we're all going through this. Um, some of us to much more extreme levels than others, um, but we are all dealing with this. So it's important to address that, I think. So um, anyway, <laughs> so now on to happier things. So I have done some stitching um, since we last talked, which is good because um, I hadn't done very much at the beginning of March. I will say um, as far as 24 hours of cross stitch and keeping up with my monthly acrostic stick and all that sort of stuff, March is a total wash. Um, I just decided to give myself a break on that. I never did set goals um, and um, and it's been difficult to stay on top of the stitching with everything else that's going on right now. So so March I didn't uh, I didn't set myself any goals. <coughs> Excuse me. I am planning on setting some goals for April. I haven't looked at the acrostic and everything yet, but um, I probably will do that um, today or tomorrow. I'll actually try to do that before April 1st so that I can start the next month on a fresh page and, you know, go from there. So, pardon my sip. Um, on the topic of 24 hours to cross stitch, <clears throat> I'm gonna apologize in advance um, because I am a little congested this morning. Allergies. Anyway, so on the topic of 24 hours of cross stitch, um, if you follow the group, um, Jen Lee's group, um, a lot of folks were asking if we could go ahead and do another 24 hours of cross stitch weekend because so many people are stuck at home and, you know, are stitching anyway or want a reason to stitch or whatever. 
Uh, Jen didn't really feel right about that because she felt like, and you can read her post in the group, but she felt like um, that might put a little too much pressure on folks who aren't able to stitch because a lot of us are still working in one form or another. So rather than do that, she decided to do a different kind of um, sal event thing uh, for folks that are um, staying home to stay safe. And so this is called Stay, stay Home and Finish Your Whip Sal. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me. This is the little um, form that she has done for it. That's not, the focus is not real great. But anyway, if you go to the group, you can download this form. And it's basically just a list of what you want to work on, what you finished, and that kind of stuff. I thought it was really great because one, um, it's really unstructured. There's no, you have to do this at this particular time or anything like that. It's just, you know, if you're home and you're working on your whips, here you go, um, which I think is awesome. So. Uh, so I'm definitely doing that. You can see I've already got, I have one entry on here, <coughs> which is my Stitchonomy Winter 2019 SAL, uh, which if you've been watching me, you know that that's one of my goals is to finally get that one finished. Um, <coughs> I do have some progress on it, so I will show you that shortly. Uh, but that's something I'm going to be working on um, going forward, at least until the end of April. Um, I personally am working from home at least until um, the end of April. We'll have to see what the governor says after that. But, um, so that will be a thing I'll be doing on the side when I'm not working, working. Um, so I've got that going. So let's talk about the stitching that has been done. Oops, pardon me. I'm gonna apologize now too for wacky things that happen because I'm not gonna try to do a ton of editing with this. <laughs> I have other stuff I want to get to and I'm under a lot of pressure with a lot of different things and I'm not going to let floss tube pressure me too. So um, let's see, I do have a finish. I have a finish since we last talked. So I showed you all what I had worked on for this. So this is my own design. Let's see if I can focus the camera a little bit. There we go. So this is my own design. Um, based off of a whole deal with Will Wheaton, um, and that's a couple of floss tubes back. Um, there's an episode called Gifts Given where I explain this, so if you're not sure what the backstory is, go check out that video. Um, but this is the finished design, so this is my, my test stitch, uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I like the way it looks. This is my, this is this fabric, incidentally, if I haven't mentioned before, is um, a fabric that I ice dyed myself. And I still have a couple of pieces of this left to play with. So I love the purple that's happening over here. So I've got this actually finished, super excited. Um, so now I need to actually finalize the pattern um, and that's gonna go up in my Etsy shop sometime soon. Um, <clears throat> I had hoped to have it done by April, um, but that, that looks like it's not gonna happen. I'll try to have it done by the end of April, hopefully. Um, I would like to do it soon. I actually want to also develop a, um, a pattern to give out for free because there's a lot of folks joining in on the hashtag be well and stitch um, <clears throat> party train whatever you want to call it <laughs> um, and so I'm I'm kind of into that I would like to develop something that I could give out for free as well so I'm working on the pattern for this I'm gonna be working on a be well and stitch pattern as well but that is a finish um, and now I just have to decide uh, how I'm gonna finish it off um, I don't know if I'll make it into a little pillow or if I want it to be framed. Um, I've been toying with the idea of putting it on a, um, making it into an ornament kind of situation, but I'm not really sure. So that is, that is a stitchy finish. So this is technically my second finish of 2020, um, because I did the first one that I actually finished and then finished off and gave to Will Wheaton. And then this one, um, is finished now as well. <clears throat> I also put in some work on my uh, linen and threads 2020 mystery SAL and I actually have um, I finally have January just about finished let's see if I can get this up here for you so there is there is January just about finished the thing, I'm missing like two small circular motifs that go in there and then the initials. Um, and I believe I've said before, I'm going to leave the initials till the end. I'm trying to get, okay. <laughs> I 
one of these days I'll get it straight. The light is really weird today too. It's really gray outside and I've got some extra lighting in here but I am not a lighting expert. I'm just doing the best I can. So yep so there is uh, just about all of January for the linen and threads and at first I wasn't sure that I liked the combination of the Indian tapestry with this um, this thread that I got from uh, Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch but the more I stitch the more I'm I'm happy with it I like the contrast of colors there so I'm curious to see how that's gonna work up as we go through um, I was able to thankfully buy some more um, of the Indian tapestry <coughs> um, I think two weeks ago um, I bought some more of that so I'm still not able to um, to resell Threadworks on my own unfortunately I wish I could get it wholesale um, but at the moment I don't have access to it but I was able to get that retail which I'm very very thankful for anytime I can still get um, any kind of cross stitchy stuff right now I am so so thankful because this stuff is keeping me sane y'all it's keeping me sane so that is that and then um, oh I actually have four pieces I worked on I'm impressed with myself I did not realize that so I started um, I started a new pattern oh and you can see that I spoiled it sad <laughs> I started a new pattern so I bought um, let me take this out of the I don't want all the shiny. <clears throat> so I bought myself a new pattern uh, right about when all this started as well. I had been looking at um, at Witchy Stitcher for a long time. I have tons of patterns that I really, really love, tons, tons of charts and designs that I think are fantastic. Um, and I've been looking at them for a long, long time. And I was actually going to buy the kit for this, and then I decided to just kit it myself um, because at the time, I think... It was like between paychecks or something like that and I just I missed their sale for their new website and whatever whatever the reason was I decided to get the PDF pattern and I kitted it myself and part of the inspiration for this was one I love witchy stitches designs um, two uh, my friend Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Crafts was doing a different Baba Yaga pattern I believe by Owl Al Forest Stitchery um, she is a huge fan of their kits um, they're fantastic. I haven't ordered one yet. I don't think they're as easy to get in the States or as I think they're a little bit more expensive to get in the States, but regardless, she was doing that. And then I saw this from Witchy Stitcher and I was like, I have to do this. So <clears throat> let me show you a slightly larger picture because it's really small. So this is called Baba Yaga. Yes, Baba Yaga. And it's really cool. It's a little creepy, but it's just kind of spiffy. It reads, turn your back to the forest, your front to me. And it has a little house on legs. Um, and I feel bad because I don't actually, um, at one point I knew the Baba Yaga story. I, I knew the mythos and everything behind it. And I have since forgotten. My memory is awful. So I don't remember all the Baba Yaga stuff. I do know that, um, I believe it's, um, Romanian origin um, kind of myth legend situation regardless I just think it's really cool so I have worked on it um, this is where I have gotten thus far so as you can see I've got the house with the stilt legs partly going here this fabric is really weird so this fabric <sighs> y'all I know better I really do I know better but I did it anyway so this fabric is it's supposed to be a 28 count Lugano that I bought from Michaels now if y'all can see I mean I think you can see the the weave of the thread here Lugana is not that thin Lugana has never been that thin no other piece of Lugana I've ever purchased is see-through like this this is, and it says even on the package that it's Lugana but it's also Belfast linen I don't know how you can be both um, so obviously this is a linen um, but it's all it seems like the cheapest linen I have ever seen in my life um, because it's almost like little bits of hay that are strung together it's I don't know it seems very flimsy it seems very cheap I'm not terribly happy with the fabric but by the time I decided I was really fed up with the fabric I already had a lot of stitching done um, and it does have the sort of like um, 
rustic feel that I think this pattern needs. So um, I will probably just continue on with it like it is, but oh my gosh, if I had known before I set this up, I probably would have picked a different fabric because this is, I'm not in love with this. Also, I didn't realize until after I started stitching, this is a much warmer tone um, of neutral than the original pattern uh, was, um, than the sampler was made on, the um, model words. <clears throat> the, the model has a much a cooler gray kind of vibe to it, but regardless, we're gonna go with it. Um, I will say that because this um, this linen is so thin and then so open threaded, um, it's actually really easy to stitch. I was gonna try this one over one, but it looked hideous. Um, I did a line of stitches and it just, it looked awful. So I took those out and now I'm stitching two over two. Um, <clears throat> so that is my Baba Yaga. I haven't worked on her this week. Um, stitching like a, uh, you know, it's just been one of those things, you know, it's, it's been a really stressful week for a lot of different reasons. Um, work has been crazy this week. Um, and, uh, some personal life stuff has been really crazy this week. I'm very, very hopeful that very, very soon the personal life stuff will be settled and I won't have to worry about that stress anymore. But even, even with stuff being resolved, there's a certain amount of stress that comes with the resolution. I don't know if that makes any sense to y'all. I don't want to get too into it because it's way too complicated, but, but maybe you all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the resolution is just as stressful as trying to get to the resolution. <laughs> so anyway, so I haven't stitched on her a whole lot, but um, I am enjoying this pattern. And uh, um, I did, I was able to order some more <clears throat> some more 310 for this because obviously it I don't know how I didn't notice this so you look at the pattern and you can see that it's mostly black right I mean that's that's a pretty duh kind of situation um, somehow Jesse did not realize that she would need lots and lots of 310 for this particular pattern so I mean I had three or four skeins but you can never have too much 310 you just can't everything needs 310 so I have been able to get some more 310 it is on the way to me so and then last but not least, I have very nearly, let me just move this needle miter. <clears throat> I have very nearly completed the winter 2019 SAL. Almost done. To the untrained eye, this may look finished. Um, and it could be finished. I could decide that I'm done. Um, but I have decided um, there's one more pattern that goes with this and it's basically like little accents and you can do it however you want to. You can use sparkly thread, you can use beads, you can do whatever. So I have decided um, because a while ago at my, I don't know why I'm hiding behind my cross stitch today. Um, <clears throat> A while back, I believe I talked about RVA Scrap, which is a creative reuse and recycle uh, craft store here in, um, or here near me, and <clears throat> in Virginia. Ugh, words. I should have had breakfast before I filmed. Anyway. <laughs> it's a creative uh, reuse and recycle store um, here in Virginia, and I, I looked into a what's essentially a massive collection of Mill Hill beads um, at that store. And I think I spent six or eight bucks for a ton of beads. If you all use Mill Hill, you know how big a deal that is. Um, <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do now that I have the stitching, stitching finished, um, I'm going to go through those beads and find some pretty sparklies that will go um, with this blue theme. And then I'm going to do those accents with the beads. It'll be my first time doing any kind of beads on cross stitch. So that's kind of exciting. Um, and then once I get the beads on here, this will be finished, finished, like full on done, uh, which will be very exciting. So that will be the first of my 2019 leftovers that I will finally, finally get off of the hoop. So that's very exciting. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I, I did put a lot of words with this picture when I posted it yesterday. <laughs> There's been a lot of feels this week um, and I let some of that come out on, uh, on Instagram yesterday. But um, because this really, 
I don't know why this pattern specifically. This has been a struggle. It, it should have been a very easy one snowflake a day situation and it just, I just didn't want to do it. Like, I don't know. There was something about it. So there's a sort of intense sense of accomplishment with finally getting to this point with this one. Um, so I'm very, very happy about it. So, and that is, that is it for whips. Let me put my needle minder back on here. <clears throat> so that's all the whips that I've worked on. Uh, there's only like a hundred different things that I want to start, obviously. Um, if you're all like me, you have, you know, a to be stitched pile that is bigger than you are. <clears throat> so that is all the whips. So what should we talk about now? We can talk about, let me get these patterns out of the way too. Let's talk about some happy mail. Because I got some happy mail since we've talked. Okay. Oops. I may have to cut that out because the pattern was all on there. <clears throat> okay, happy mail. So um, I recently, I have a couple of people that I follow on Patreon. Um, if you follow Rachel Ray Craft, you know that she has a Patreon, so she's one of my one of my folks. Um, but there's a couple other different artists and creators that I follow as well. One of them, um, her business name, her site name is uh, The Latest Kate. Um, and she does this really cute um, spiffy art with um, lots of different kinds of inspirational sayings. And it's not your standard, you know, keep on, you're going to do it. It's more like um, geared towards folks who have anxiety, folks who are dealing with different kinds of um, stress and difficulties, chronic illness and stuff like that. And um, I've been following her for at least the last six months, uh, if not longer. And it's funny because I find usually her daily post um, is something that really just hits home for me that day almost every single day. Um, so I decided to actually um, contribute to her on Patreon because not only that, and I want to support her, um, you know, so she, she does something fantastic and I want to support that, but also because she decided that she was going to do holographic stickers of one particular inspirational uh, image that she had done that really, really spoke to me. And so I was like, okay, if I, if I join in at this level, I'll get that sticker and that'll be fantastic. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So when I joined her Patreon, and I think it's like $10 or something like that, that level gets you two mini prints, um, or mini, um, but it gets you two basically cardstock prints of a couple of her images, and then this time um, it actually got you a holograph sticker as a bonus as well. So uh, the latest Kate, two of her newer images, so this is really cool. So what if you're a bit of a miss, a mess, you're still killing it. And it's this like sparkly rainbow unicorn, super cool galaxy unicorn. So that's one of the, the prints that I got this time. <clears throat> and then this is the one that I had to have. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm trying anyway. And when she, literally the day she posted this, I had been having exactly that kind of day where it was just like, I, I am so clueless. I don't know if I'm doing this right, but I am doing my damnedest to get it done. So this was, this really, really spoke to me. So it was really cool that I got the mini print of this, but then I also, this was what I signed up for was the holographic sticker. <laughs> so these are super awesome. So this is, this is some of my happy mail this time because the latest Kate is super awesome. You should follow her. She's on Facebook and she's also on Instagram. Um, she posts, um, she basically does this daily where she has some kind of, some kind of something to say to help you make it through the day. And she, she does cute little images. If you join her Patreon, I think even at the lowest level, you get um, to join in on the, um, the polls to help her decide what and how she's going to draw every month. So definitely check her out. She's fantastic. Um, and then I got my first ever piece of Stitchy Kindness. First ever. So if you're in Kathy Davidson's Dying for Cross Stitch, no, sorry, Bestitch Me's, I'm getting my folks confused. If you follow uh, Brandy at Bestitch Me on Facebook, um, she does weekly giveaways. Well, 
um, one particular customer of hers won a number of giveaways and decided that because she had gotten uh, rewarded so generously that she would pay that forward. So she decided to um, to uh, do a, a rack, a random act of kindness, and um, give away several of the patterns that she had won. Well, I actually won one of the patterns. It was awesome. And I was so excited because it's a, it's an Ink Circles pattern. Um, it's called Ars Robotica. And um, it was one of the patterns I had seen that I really, really wanted. So I was super excited. And then, you know, uh, this beautiful, kind woman sent this thing out. And she kept asking me if I'd received it. And I still hadn't received it. And it never came and it never came. And I felt bad because, you know, I really wanted it. But I, I certainly was like... You know, well, if it got lost in the mail, it's, you know, it is what it is. I, I was not mad in any way, shape, or form because if it's something that I didn't have to begin with, then I'm not going to miss not having it anyway. Um, but she was really concerned. Um, and, you know, so, uh, you know, we kept in touch about it. And then lo and behold, I had completely given up on it. Um, she sent it out on March 7th and I had completely given up on it. And then yesterday, yesterday in the mail, I get this pattern and I'm thinking oh she's just you know she's just sent the pattern she didn't just send the pattern she sent needle minders look at that so this is Ars Robotica let me back up a little bit this is Ars Robotica and if you're familiar with ink circles she does a lot of these maze like designs which are fantastic but this beautiful beautiful woman in addition to giving me all of the, you know, giving me the pattern, which she didn't have to do in the first place, she gave me three needle minders too. And I love this little bee. Look at this dude. He's got the, the needle threader on here. I've needed something like this forever. I got a, a starfish and a mermaid tail. How nice is that? That is super, super nice. And, and, cause that wasn't enough, right? I have this thread sorter, all of this, all of this, just so she could give away this one pattern. Come on, like that's just, it's so generous. And so I, you know, I sent her 400 million emojis like, oh my gosh, cause she like, y'all, you don't even know how bad a week it's been. And then I get this mail and it's in this really cute, I can't even, like, I don't know why this gets me, but it's in a pink bubble mailer. And <laughs> it's in a pink bubble mailer and it's not just the pattern, it's all this other stuff. I was so excited. So I sent her about a hundred emojis and she's like, well, there's another one coming because I was so afraid it wasn't going to get to you. And I was just like, what? <laughs> so apparently there's another another package coming. And I told her, oh, well, if you want, I'll just, I'll rack the next one. When I get it, I'll rack it back out into the group. And she's like, well, you might not want to. So this lovely, lovely human being not only sent me this to start with, but because she thought it wasn't coming, she sent me something else now. Um, so there's going to be a more, a bigger, another surprise in the mail. So I can't even tell y'all. It's just so exciting. So that is my happy mail. That's so, so exciting. So I hope you all, I hope somebody is sending you some happy mail. I will probably try to do some happy mail sometime here in the future for me too. I have to, I have to figure out the whole Google Forms thing <laughs> before I can do that. <laughs> Anyway, let's keep it rolling. So in addition to Happy Mail, I have made a few purchases. I haven't bought a ton of stuff um, that I have received yet. I'm trying not to shop too much, on, even online. It's it's one of those things where there's a fine line. Like I wanna continue to support businesses that I know could be really, really affected right now, but I also don't want to force people to work when, when they should be distancing, so. It's a really difficult thing, um, but I have made some purchases. Um, I'm trying to stick mostly to my smaller um, folks so that I can support folks that I know still need to make rent and things like that versus large businesses like Amazon. Um, <clears throat> so some things that I have purchased. Um, I was gonna just say no to floss, but... Kathy did it again. Kathy is always doing it. So this is, oh, it's getting so washed out. So this is actually a really nice spring green with some yellow. And this is pink and purple. Really nice. And then also, because I love my blues. 
So this is an almost teal blue. It's coming off a lot more sky blue. But it's really, really gorgeous. So I did get, um, I was conservative. I only got four. <laughs> I just realized I'm missing Kathy's. <laughs> I'm missing her floss posting right now, literally as we speak. The floss is already gone. Okay. It's probably just as well. I need to not. I need to not. Yeah. I want to support my businesses, but I can't be supporting them single-handedly. <laughs> so that is my Kathy Happy Mail. That's from uh, Dying for Cross Stitch. And then also, um, I haven't um, I haven't talked about it yet, but I did get a few purchases from, um, or I placed an order um, with Misty at Mystic hand dyed for a few things from Nashville Market. I didn't go crazy because um, I plan to go as a buyer next year. So I didn't wanna buy all the things. Um, I also tried to be really selective and only order things that I was not gonna be able to get through shops um, after the fact. So, because the way it seems to work is that you have Nashville exclusives, which are, um, the title is misleading because what it means is that they are not available immediately to shops who do not attend Nashville Market. So if you go to Market, you can buy these exclusives and then you can sell them to your people and you have exclusive access to that stuff um, or you're the only people who have that stuff until April 9th or so. Then there's a more general release and other retailers who were not at Market can then start selling those patterns. So. Um, so exclusive is not as exclusive as it seems. Now limited patterns are things that were only available at market or were available in limited numbers. Um, so I tried to stick to the limited things, the things that I would not be able to get in any other form. So I, um, um, I made a very small order, um, comparatively speaking. <laughs> those of you who are in the Mystic Hand Dyed group, you've seen some of those posts. Um, one of the things I got um, I thought it was nifty. They do this cookbook every year, um, National Needlework Market Cookbook. I haven't actually looked at the recipes, but basically all the designers put a recipe in here. And this is a really nice cookbook. It's got nice glossy pages and everything. Um, there's even a free um, pattern in the front. You know, it's, it's super, super cute. I actually really need to look through this and see if I can find some recipes for dinner. Um, but I got the cookbook. Um, at first, that was all I was going to get because I was like... I definitely can't get that outside of market. And then, and then, um, I fell in love with this ink circles pattern. So this is actually not a limited pattern. This will be available through other retailers. Um, in fact, I'm going to carry this in my shop going forward because you know how much I love ink circles. But this is my pattern. This is for me. <laughs> this specifically is for me. So this is called stained glass Christmas, and it's got a Christmas cactus. Um, I believe this is mistletoe, and then this one up here is holly, and then this is, what is this one? That's the amaryllis. So it's got four different patterns. The larger ones are 100 by 100, I believe. Does this say? Stitches, oh, 89 stitches square for the larger ones, 55 inches square for the smaller ones. So, um, and they are full coverage for what they are but they're still small stitches. So um, I'm hoping to actually do this soon. And I think, I think I'm gonna do this on using my baby lima bean. I think that one piece of baby lima bean might actually be enough for all four of these. So very, very excited about that. I also, and I don't normally get these kinds of patterns, but for some reason this really struck me. Be different. And when I say these kinds of patterns, I mean bee-related patterns. Um, I've never bought uh, Blackberry Rabbit, but this was super cute. I saw it stitched up somewhere, and I just, I don't know. I just loved it. I just loved it. Be different. Um, there's actually one by, I think it's Annie B is the designer who has done one that says, um, it's a bee related one too and it's something about the queen. I can't remember what it is, but I'm gonna have to get it. Um, I did not get it this time around for some reason. Um, <clears throat> I think because it was bee related and I'm like, you don't normally like bees. But regardless, I'm gonna have to get it because it was it was like God Save the Queen or something like that. It was really, it was super cute. Um, so I'm gonna have to get that. And then this last one I got 
is actually 12 patterns in one. Um, so that's part of how I justified it to myself is that it's 12 different patterns. Um, I wanted some seasonal stuff and this seemed like just the ticket. So this is hands-on design and it's well-rounded perennial pinwheels. So this is actually 12 different designs in varying sizes. So I didn't realize it when I purchased this, but the pattern at the top, um, the one at the top is smallest and then it goes to a larger pattern here at the bottom. And you can also purchase with this, um, you can purchase this well-rounded uh, perennial pinwheels finishing kit. Um, so to do the full pattern, to do the full kit, you would need um, four of these. I only purchased one because I wanted to see what was in the kit and what all it involved and all that kind of stuff. So this comes with um, six laser cut discs to complete one season, three pit wheels. So these two go together. Um, <clears throat> I also figured realistically, I'm only gonna need one of these at a time. I can I can order more of these later. So, um, and these I believe will bring to, be bringing to the shop as well eventually. Uh, but again, this is for me, this is for greedy little me. Um, I just thought it was super cute. I wanted something seasonal and this is, this is, it's a little bit primitive without being too primitive. It's sort of like a cross between um, the stuff that's more modern that I like from ink circles and the stuff that's a little bit more um, primitive that I like from uh, Plum Street samplers and other designers like that. So super, super cute. So those are all for me. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've purchased so far like i said i'm trying to trying to keep things limited ordering just enough to stay sane not ordering so much to to put other people out so that's what i have um let's see <sighs> what is coming up well um mostly i'm going to be continuing to stitch on the things that i've been stitching on um i don't have at the very moment a lot of particular plans i will say that i have finally purchased enough um i finally purchased enough words easy count 25 count lugana um, I finally purchased enough of that that I have enough for both of the Heaven and Earth Designs patterns that I have currently. So I have long I have waited, or long have I waited, long have I waited, the dragon one. Um, and I also have Contessa with Squid, and I now have enough fabric to do either of both of those at the same time. Um, <clears throat> so very excited about that. I think my big mental block with that is just getting it on a frame or something. I'm not sure why... I'm having a hard time with that, but I am. Uh, for some reason, it just seems, um, I don't know. I just can't, because I want to have as much of the surface visible as possible, but I know from working on the Soya that a 17 by 17 is too big to work on comfortably. So I probably need a scroll frame. Um, I just haven't figured out what scroll frame and how I'm gonna manage that. And I probably just need to get over this thing of, of not wanting to roll over edges and things like that. Cause I know I've seen so many people in so many groups who have like an eight by eight Q snap and that's all they ever use, even if the piece is this big. Um, and they just roll stuff over and they tuck it all in. And I'm just like, once I've like, if it's blank, if it's blank fabric, I don't care. It's totally fine. Once I've stitched on it, I'm like, I'm so afraid that the stitches are going to get squished and everything's going to get messed up. So yeah, so got to get over it. <laughs> um, and I haven't quite gotten to the point where I'm willing to invest in an Elon stand yet. Um, if you follow Rachel, um, she has purchased one. I believe she's still waiting to receive it. Um, and I have looked at them. They look fantastic. And it's like a, a universal stand. So you can actually, there's kitties. Um, you can actually clip other you know, it's not like a it's not like your standard scroll frame where your one piece of work is what you're working on and if you want to work on something different you need a whole new scroll frame so you have the scroll frames but they clip into an almost universal stand so i could use the the elon scroll frames with it but i could also just like put a q snap and other stuff into it so maybe at some point i haven't quite decided I'm also looking at, there's a couple of lap frames that look really nice um, that I might look at. I just haven't, I don't know, for whatever reason, mental block, still trying to get to it. So, 
Um, I believe that's it. Oh, except for shop updates. Durr. <laughs> I was going to say, I do have a bunch of yarny stuff, but I think I'm actually going to do that in a separate video um, in case folks that watch cross stitch don't want to watch yarny stuff. Um, and they're, I don't know, maybe I'll, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I don't want to make this too much longer. It's already been 40 minutes, so. Let's talk a couple of shop updates. So um, I have expanded a little bit as far as what I have um, access to um, for distributors and stuff like that, which is super exciting. Um, I haven't gotten quite to where I want to be, so I still don't have access to, pardon me, I still don't have access to Threadworks and Weeks Dye Works and um, uh, Classic Color Works, uh, which is unfortunate because what I want to do um, something that is in the works uh, for the future is I actually want to kit up some of these patterns that I love so much that don't come in kits um, anywhere that I've seen. So uh, Plum Street samplers, ink circles, some of these others um, where you can buy the pattern and uh, even on some sites they'll let you dump all of the stuff in the cart and they make it super easy to buy but wouldn't it be nice if you could just have a kit so that you didn't have to worry about it so that even if it doesn't come with the fabric or if the fabric is optional you at least have the thread pack so you have all the threads that you need um, some people prefer to kit up their own stuff that's totally fine I do that a lot of times if it's a DMC kit, but when these kits are, you know, multiple different kinds of threads, when you have some thread works and you have some classic color works and you have some weeks dye works, it's really nice to just buy it as a package and then you don't have to worry about it. You know, everything coordinates, you know, everything's correct. So I really want to do that. I just have to have access to the threads. So um, at the moment I can totally do that for dinky dyes. Um, and they are fantastic because they already sell packs, color coordinated packs for their own patterns. Um, I'm gonna start working on putting together silk packs for, um, for patterns that are not theirs, but that they provide on their website. One of which um, is actually a new pattern I'm gonna start carrying in the shop. Um, and I actually need to do the color conversion for this, but this is fantastic. So this is Rainbow Mandala. <clears throat> this is a Shannon Christine design. And it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And she's actually charted it in DMC. So this is totally available, um, or this is totally charted in just regular DMC. But I feel like why not do it in silk? Why not? Um, classic color, or not classic. Dinky dyes are so gorgeous and so soft. How could you not do this in dinky dyes? So I'm gonna be working on um, some color conversions for this um, so that I can start selling silk packs for this. Dinky dye silk packs. Um, <clears throat> and also, um, I have an affinity for rainbows, if you haven't noticed. So pretty much anything that's rainbow, I'm going to be trying to work on some dinky dyes conversions. Um, this is another pattern that I'm um, going to be adding to the shop soon. This is Ink Circles Namaste. And this is gorgeous rainbow. And I don't know, I mean, Ink Circles, um, she does a really fantastic job of color gradation uh, in her design. So I'm not sure that it's necessary really to change the colors a whole lot, but I might work on some color conversions for that as well. <clears throat> and let's see. Now these are some Dinky Dyes designs. So these already have silk packs. Uh, which is fantastic. And I actually, I have silk packs for this. This is Regal Mandala by DD Designs. So I have this pattern and the silk pack that goes with it. That'll be going up at the shop soon. This is Southern Stars. This is another one I really like. It's hard to tell in this light, but this is sort of a violet green. I thought it was a nice springy kind of color combo. So that also has a silk pack. <clears throat> and then um, more designs that already have silk packs. Um, I have a couple of Glendon Place designs. So Rachel turned me on to this actually, because she asked a while ago, can you get Baked Alaska? She wanted the silk pack for bake, Baked Alaska. And I was like, what in the world is Baked Alaska? Like, why is that a, sil a silk pack color? Um, it turns out it goes with this design. So this is Baked Alaska. This is a Glendon Place design. 
by Cheryl Granda. It's really fantastic and intricate. And this, this specific piece is called Baked Alaska. And as you can see there, it's part of the amazing desserts collection. So it's a whole series of mandalas that are named after different kinds of desserts. And it's fantastic. It's a fantastic series. Eventually I will have all of these. At the moment I have, um, or will be adding soon, Baked Alaska. Thanks to Rachel. <laughs> and also because it's purple, plum pudding. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And these also have silk packs on Dinky Dyes. Um, I have not purchased them yet, but they, they are available. Um, so that's something that could be coming soon. So um, I do have a bunch of other patterns that I'll be adding. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every single one of you. I will tell you though, um, as far as shop updates go, I've been thinking really hard about doing a Facebook group. I have a Facebook page um, that you're probably all familiar with. And, um, but I know a lot of businesses are doing a Facebook group situation where they actually will post um, their items uh, in the group and and have people me please things and um, and sell things that way and I've thought about doing that because it seems like it might actually be um, significantly less stressful than Etsy um, any of you who have worked with Etsy on the business side of it um, it is not only time-consuming to set up listings um, it's also expensive um, it's really expensive so um, I'm considering different ways of going about things I'm not going to close the Etsy store anytime soon um, <clears throat> but I am considering additional methods of sale and a Facebook group is one of the things that I've been looking at um, especially because it would let me set up exclusive sales and deals and things like that um, so if that's something you all be would be interested in just let me know um, because my plan would be not only to have special discounts and things like that for the folks in the Facebook group but you would all get access to new items first before they go up on Etsy so um, so that's a thing so let me show you I got a bunch of, um, I fell in love with Lizzie Kate, so I got a bunch of Lizzie Kates. And these are all cute little quick patterns and stuff. I thought this was really great just for the aspect of um, being thankful and being blessed. Um, small things with great love, live simply. And then dreaming is free, believe in miracles. Yeah, so um, I just loved the sentiment and all of those um so i wanted to have some of that kind of stuff in the shop and those are quick little quick little things i have a few more ink circles so um yeah this one this one i actually should have put in my personal stash because this one i bought specifically to do for a friend of ours so it's um four delis which um is a play on floor delis and a couple of friends of ours are super into, I forget what the team is, it's a college team out of um, New Orleans, and that's their team that they follow. So I got this to make into a, um, a Christmas ornament for them for Christmas this year. Um, this is a 73 by 73 square, so that'll be a nice size. Finished, it's five by five, um, over two threads on 30 count, so. So yeah, that'd be a, a really good size for a nice ornament. So that's actually my personal stash. Um, I can get these for the shop, <laughs> but that one specifically is going into my personal stash. Um, I also got by any other name, um, and I may have missed out. There's another rose pattern that um, that she did for um, for Nashville. It's called After the Roses. And um, I bought this one thinking it was the same pattern, but After the Roses is a distinct, distinctly different pattern, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be available after Nashville, so we'll have to see. Um, but I do have this one, which I think is beautiful. If I can get After the Roses, I will get that as well. So that'll be coming to the shop. And also Lichen. And this one is cool because, I don't know if you can see it here, there are different colorways. So this comes with four different colorway options, which is really, really cool. And it's got DMC, um, DMC numbers for all four of those colorways. 
So she does some really awesome stuff. I love ink circles. It's one of my favorites. And then not to be forgotten as one of my favorites, Plum Street Samplers, the Milk and Cream Co. It's this little cow. It's hard to see on here. It's this little cow and like a milkmaid and there's little cows in the background. I don't know why I'm in love with this, with um, this style, but Plum Street Samplers is like one of my favorites. I don't normally go for primitive type stuff, but these are so stinking cute. I can't even, and the cow, look, the cow has like a quilt design. How cute is that? The cow is quilted. And then these little trees in the background. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's, that's probably going in my personal stash. If you want one of these, let me know. <laughs> and then more Lizzie Cates. Um, because it's spring, I got the spring, um, the spring smalls. So this is four different patterns um, as pictures. So there's a um, there's buzz, which is like bees and a hive. There's a little bunny. There's one that actually says spring, and then there's a house with flowers and stuff like that. So I thought those were super cute. And then also Lizzie Kate. Um, I said I wasn't gonna go through every single one of these, and I just did anyway. Sorry. Um, coffee time. You can never have, never have too many coffee themed cross stitches in my opinion. Um, so yeah, so that's um, all the stuff that will be coming to the shop. Um, I would love to tell you exactly when it's going to be listed, um, but I'm not good at timelines like that right now. <laughs> I don't want to tell you it's going to be up by tomorrow and then, you know, it's three weeks from now. I'm going to do my best. Uh, we're all doing our best right now and uh, that's me too. Um, I also have uh, already in the shop, so you can actually order this now. Um, I have this fantastic, fantastic, I've probably shown this before. I can't remember, I talked about it, but I don't think I had the, the floss at the time. Um, so this is the Twisted Rainbow Sampler Silk Pack. So this is designed specifically to go with um, the Twisted Rainbow Sampler for, uh, that is put out by Northern Expressions. <clears throat> and the reason that I that I have this in stock, that I carry this, is because rainbows. Um, so I can get the pattern. I don't have the pattern currently, um, but it's a pattern I can get. But my whole my whole thing is that this is a fantastic um, sampler of rainbow colors from Dinky Dyes. So um, the reason that I carry it is one, because rainbow, and two, because um, I figure there are a lot of people like me who might just want a bunch of colors to work with. And with a catalog of 282 colors, it can be difficult to figure out where you should start, like what are the colors that you need in the starter pack. So um, I think this is a fantastic range. Um, there's, uh, there's another pack that is very similar to this that is for the um, it's another rainbow sampler. It's not the twisted rainbow sampler. I can't remember what, what Northern Expressions pattern it is, but there's a more muted version of this as well um, that I could carry if I had interest in that. So, but this is fantastic. Eventually I'm gonna have a pack of these for myself. At the moment, um, I only have my, my stock and I'm holding on to the stock as stock because um, as far as I know, Dinky Dyes is still shipping, um, but it may come that they won't be able to. Um, going forward. So we'll just have to see how things go. And for the time being, these will be up soon. These should be up before April 1st. This is April's floss pack. So this is the floss of the month pack for April. Um, it's getting really, really washed out, but these are gorgeous springing colors. I thought it was awesome. This is why I decided to do uh, packs of four instead of packs of three, because as I was researching and setting up what colors would be in each pack going forward, um, the first four were sort of in a color family that, that went together. And then the second four were actually all really springy colors. And then the next four are all um, Aussie themed colors. So that's how I decided to do that. This is a little bit better. So we have this really gorgeous pink. Um, it's not as, it's a baby pink. I'm trying to remember what these, I can't remember what these colors are called. Um, and then a really nice baby blue, not quite a robin's egg, um, a nice pale yellow. Um, it's paler than a butter yellow. And then this gorgeous spring green. It's a little bit more intense that it's coming off on camera. But these four colors are the April uh, Floss of the Month colors. And um, at the moment I have very limited quantities. 
but I'm hoping to, to order some more of those soon. Um, but I do have some of those on hand to put those up in the shop. So that is shop updates. So um, let me see. I think the yarn stuff is really only going to be a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to add it here. I can always chop it off later. Um, or if you don't want to look at yarn stuff, then you can skip ahead now. Okay, so you all know that I get Knit Crate. <clears throat> so let's start with Knit Crate, and we'll just go with that real quick. So last month, I got a lot of Knit Crate this month. <laughs> Last month I got the cool, um, the chill out theme. So uh, once sales went up this month, I actually went back and I got the the Energize Me version of that, which is coming off really orange on camera, but there's actually some, um, <clears throat> some like pinky purple in here um, and like a magenta color and that kind of stuff. So I got two skeins of this. Um, <clears throat> which I think is super cute. I'm thinking about making some fingerless gloves with that. I've got two skeins of that. So that was just something I ordered. That's not Knit Crate. Um, <clears throat> I also got these Take All The Things, and I should have looked at the size before I purchased these because you can't take any of the things in this tiny little bag. I don't know what things you're taking. Um, but, they're <laughs> but they're super cute. How cute are those? Um, so I guess you could put your, your stitch markers and stuff like that in there. But I got two of them thinking they'd be like pencil bag sized. Um, not so much. So that's a little bitty. Anyway, they're super cute. So I got these in addition to actually getting Knit Crate. <clears throat> and this month, and Heike and, uh, and Rachel can probably tell you as well, um, Stone, Cold Co Stone Cold Coffee Crafts and Rachel Ray Crafts, if you follow them, um, I can't remember if they've already done their knit crates for, <clears throat> for March, but we're almost at the end of March, so I think it's safe. Um, and I believe they both mentioned this, that March's knit crate colors for um, the regular knit crate were not fantastic depending on your taste um, they were all a lot more muted than their than their last couple of choices have been so I did actually go ahead and get a knit crate a regular knit crate I got the chill out but they had this fantastic color in the sock crate this month um, so I got the energize me sock crate as well <clears throat> And the little extra gift this month is is a little like silicone tea bag. That's super cute, super cute. So this color, I believe, is called Blood Moon. Oh, it's gonna look super. I don't know what the color is going on here. Um, it looks really red on screen, but this is actually a gorgeous deep magenta. Um, it is a really fantastic color. And this is, it's sock weight yarn uh, because it's sock crate. And in sock crate, you only get the one skein, I guess, because this makes two socks. Um, <clears throat> I really would have loved to have had a second skein. And I think you can see it in the camera. There's actually little sparkles. Um, so there's, there's <clears throat> a fiber that runs through here that is actually a shiny metallic kind of fiber. So it's fantastic. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So um, I did, so this is the sock crate. Um, I will not be getting sock crate next month because um, I did not care for, I thought about it, um, but I didn't care for the colors that came in sock crate. I also don't like the fact that you're paying $5 less to get half as much yarn. Um, even though I think you could make more out of this because it's so much thinner, but I'm excited to figure out what to do with this. This is gorgeous. I don't think I'm gonna make socks out of it, but um, I can't wait to work with this super, super thin yarn. Um, but yeah, so that is Sock Crate. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. I wish it was not coming off, so it looks like really kind of burgundy dark red, but that's not what color it is. And then this is the regular Knit Crate, um, which I decided to get because it um, it's a really toned down color, but uh, the more I looked at it, the more it kind of grew on me. And it's also an, an alpaca fiber, I believe. So the freebies this month are actually really nitty related. So we've got some stitch markers and some needlepoint thingies. 
and then the actual um, wool is sort of a it's coming off kind of teal but this is more green it's like a forest green and it's super soft it's really really soft um, so this is lab labrebus in ancient pines and it is 100 percent baby alpaca and that was the reason I decided to go ahead and get this anyway. Even though the color was not my favorite, favorite color, um, I really wanted to try some alpaca. So, um, and I will say that this feels like it would be fantastic as a, a scarf or a cowl to, to wear around your neck when it's cold. So um, I just, I love to touch it. I love to touch it. It feels so good. Um, so I have, and I love the kind of drape of it. Um, so this is, I think this is going to be awesome. I can't wait. And then I think this month's patterns are, I'm trying to remember. There's a capelet, a crochet capelet, a hat and cowl for knitting, which, I mean, this would be fantastic in a cowl. I definitely definitely think in a couple of sock patterns so yeah so there's a capelet um, I don't know that I'd I'd wear a capelet but you know that's in there and they got the socks and stuff like that so anyway that is the knit crate <clears throat> now I will say I've ordered some other fiber as well um, because uh, Rachel has been talking about this fabulous fabulous yarn dyer uh, curio yarns in the UK and I'm super, super jealous because there's this, um, there's this monthly club that Curio Yarns is doing based on the Witcher series. So it's colors that are curated to go along with characters from the series, which is fantastic. And when Rachel showed the first color from that, um, from that monthly subscription, it was fantastic and I wanted it. But because the dryer is based in the UK, it's uh, the shipping is is really really expensive. Um, and so when you're talking about hand dyed yarns anyway, um, the price point is already up there. And then you add the shipping from the UK, and now we're talking about possibly anywhere between forty and fifty dollars for one skein of yarn. So it's hard for me to justify that. Um, it's getting less hard because <laughs> it's so gorgeous. But um, because of that, I decided to look for some dyers that might be here in the US that I could maybe save some shipping and get a similar quality um, or interesting colorways and stuff like that. So I did place an order. This is the first time I've ordered from this particular dyer. Um, she is on Etsy as a chick that knits. Um, <clears throat> And she has some fantastic colorways and stuff. Now I'm gonna preface this because um, I think part of part of the thing is I didn't get exactly what I expected. So I'll, I'll say that, um, which is not necessarily a negative thing, but in the interest of full disclosure, I did not get exactly what I expected. I think part of that is because I am not super familiar with different kinds of fibers and different weights of yarn and wool and things like that. So I think that may be part of why I didn't get exactly what I expected. But the other thing is, I do believe that her pictures, the colors in her pictures are much more intense than real life. So um, I ordered thinking I was getting a certain kind of color and then the colors that I got are not quite what I expected. So there's that. <clears throat> that being said, what I got is actually pretty good. Um, and what I do like about her um, particular shop is that unlike a lot of shops, she sells these mini skeins. So you can try out a color for six bucks or so. Uh, maybe, I think seven might be the regular price, $7 a skein. So if you're looking at your your yarns that you might buy at the craft store like Michael's and Joann's and stuff like that, um, <clears throat> you're definitely paying a lot more per weight than you would buying craft yarn because you might get a nice big skein for $7 at Michael's versus a mini skein from a dyer for $7. But if you're trying to get into hand dyed fibers, um, I think this is the way to go because you can see it, feel it, touch it, play with it uh, without investing $30 for one skein that you may or may not like. So 
So I think this is fantastic that she does these mini skeins. So um, the first colorway I got is Blooming Roses. So this is mini sock yarn and it's like way blown out. The color is so, I think it's gotten brighter outside. Let me see if I can, okay. It's a little bit better, yeah. So, <clears throat> um, now based on the pictures on her Etsy shop, this should have been a lot pinker. The blue should have been more teal. Um, so it's a lot more muted than I had expected. And I got three skeins of this, so. Um, it's still a pretty color. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not quite what I thought I was ordering, especially because I thought there was a lot more purple um, and magenta in these. So um, I had ordered what I thought was going to be a nice bright teal um, to go with this. It turns out these do go fairly well, but this is not nearly as bright as I had expected. Um, it's still, again, a beautiful color, just not quite what was pictured. And then um, this... Um, like the Blood Moon, this is actually a more purplish magenta kind of color versus a, a red. Um, it comes off very, very red on screen. Um, and it is, it's a beautiful color, but again, not as, um, it doesn't go as well with the Blooming Roses as I had expected. And it's not as purple and bright as I expected. So these are all beautifully dyed fibers. Oh, and uh, so this colorway is Stiletto. A stiletto um, and I as I said it's it's a, pur a more purpley magenta kind of color in real life than it's showing up on the um, on the camera um, but it's it's not as intense a color as I had expected and then this other is Robin's egg which um, I think is a fair name for the color but again, not as intense based on the pictures as I expected it to be. So regardless, I think the Robin's Egg and the Blooming Roses, I think those will go really nicely together. Um, I'm thinking about making some kind of shawl. Um, this color um, stiletto, I don't think is going to go as nicely with those, but I'm, I'm not sure. But that is what I purchased. So that is, um, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't actually stitched with these yet. I haven't done anything with these yet. But this is um, Mini Sock 8020 Merino Nylon Superwash, 80 yards, 20 grams. So it's a decent amount of yarn for the price. Um, and the other thing that I thought was interesting is the texture of these is very different than what I expected because it's, um, I don't know if you can see, it's very ribbed. Um, it is difficult to see at this distance, but there's, you can see there are well-defined ribs well-defined ribs, which I'm not used to on a lot of my yarns. Um, and that might be because of, I don't know if she spins her own fiber. Anyway, I'm going off topic. Um, <laughs> the point is I wanted to try a dyer here in the U.S. Um, I do think her dye job is really nice. Um, I think they look really nice. Um, I just wish that they were truer to the pictures that I saw on her Etsy shop. So I will be, going forward, I will be trying some other folks. Um, uh, there's a couple of other stores on Etsy that I do want to try. There's one who has some really fantastic spring colors um, that I really, really, really want to get into. So by the time we talk next time, well, it'll probably only be two weeks. I might not order within the next two weeks, probably by May. Um, I will order from this other, um, a couple of the other folks. I also need to actually do some, some knitting before I order that much more yarn. Um, but what I will say, even though I had, you know, I had some concerns over the, um, the true to lifeness of the colors pictured, I will say that, um, when she sent me my package, she actually put it in this gorgeous little shopping bag. Um, I did this myself. That's my fault. Um, the, the bag had been folded over in the shipping package and when I cut, I cut the, cut it right off, but it had been a little hand, a cute little handled bag that actually coordinates with the shipping package, which I thought was really awesome. And not only did she put, um, you know, we have the invoice in here, but she put a little thank you card with a discount code in there as well, uh, which I thought was fantastic. So, um, <clears throat> If you like these colors and if you're okay with it not being exactly like it looks online, um, you know, you should check her out. So that is a chick that knits, a chick that knits. 
Um, and I can't remember the name of the other one that I want to check out, or I'd give you that name as well. Um, but there, there is at least one other dyer here in the U.S. Um, that I will be checking out. I believe a chick that knits is in Michigan. So that is that. Um, last but not least, I do want to show you a piece of knitting. Um, but I just remembered that it's in the other room, so I'm going to pause. Okay, so I have grabbed my knitting from the other room. <laughs> and this is in my last unicorn spiffy bag that I got as part of the Secret Santa, DP Secret Santa. Um, this artist is Medusa the doll maker, but the, the actual theme is um, the last unicorn. So anyway, <laughs> just putting that out there. So um, I believe I showed this in the last video. I started working on this diagonal shawl thing. Um, yeah. So last, when last we saw each other, I had not even gotten into this lighter blue color. I had only done about that much. Um, now I have that much. So, um, and I'm supposed to be stitching this until the straight edge is 32 inches. So I have quite a ways to go. Um, that's maybe 12 or 18 inches. Um, but yeah, so, um, and this is a super simple pattern. This is just a pattern directly off of the skein of yarn. And I'm actually using, um, this is a Karen cake. Oh, don't come apart. Okay. Yeah. So this is a Karen cake, Karen cakes. And this is in the color gelato. So that is what I'm using. Um, if I read the directions correctly, this pattern actually takes two of those. Um, so I have another one in a similar colorway um, that I can add to it once I get there. I'm doing pretty well with this. I've only made a couple of mistakes, I think. And there's a couple of rows that are a little bit looser than I would like. Um, but this is super simple because it's just knit, 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 knit. And when you get to the diagonal side, you increase one. So that's all there is to it. Um, I'm going to be working on some other patterns <clears throat> that require both knit and uh, purl stitches because I really need to to practice my purling. I'm not I'm not intentionally capable of purling in the right direction because um, as those of you who knit know, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hold your needles like this. So you have your working needle in your left hand, working needle in your left hand, and, or I don't know if this is technically the working needle, this is where your work is, and then you, you knit off of the, the left hand needle onto the right hand needle, and then you turn it around and so that you're always working from the left to the right. Well, my brain has decided that how it should really work is that I knit everything off of the left onto the right needle and then I knit everything off of the left onto the or the everything off of the left onto the right and then everything on the right to the left um, and it the way that my brain has figured out how to do that is these stitches are knit stitches and these stitches are purl stitches so I end up with an automatic garter stitch when I do that which is fantastic, except when you need to do a pattern where you have like knit two, purl one, knit two, purl one, um, or something like that. I don't know how to purl without stitching from the wrong needle, if that makes any sense. So that is a thing I need to teach myself, um, but not with this pattern. This was more about <clears throat> one, I just kind of wanted a soft, um, big scarf that I could use. Um, so that was part of it. Um, and I have a ton of the, I have a ton of Karen cakes because back in the day when these were first out, I was like, I need all the colors. I need every single one of them. I have so many rainbow skeins. It's not even funny. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted something to do with these particular skeins of yarn, uh, cakes of yarn. Um, but the other thing was just about, uh, knitting enough to develop a consistent, um, sort of tension and style and stuff like that. And a lot of that is just about muscle memory. The more you do it, the, the more consistently um, it is done. So anyway, so that is that. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for the knitting. So I believe I've talked about these knitting needles before. These are aluminum knitting needles or nickel. I can't remember. They're from Knit Picks. Um, and I actually, I really love these. They're, they're really slippery, which um, I like a lot. 
and I'm loving this um this interchangeable cable which is pretty cool so anyway that is it that is it for everything <laughs> for cross stitching for knitting for all the things so um, if you are still here thank you so much for watching um, again I hope you are all staying safe I hope you are all healthy I hope you're all well um, if there's anything I can do that is helpful um, just let me know I'm happy to to reach out we have been some of my friends and I have been doing some video chats and uh, and games um, via screen share and stuff like that and um, <clears throat> I think I am going to try doing something like that next week for my subscribers so if that's something you're interested in just drop me a little note in the comments let me know that you would like to be involved in that and I will make sure that the link goes out so that folks can join so um, okay I'm not going to stuff this back in on my camera <laughs> Uh, talking and doing things is not my friend okay so again I hope you're all well I hope you stay well and um, I will see you again next time have a great one